yoke upon me and take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What did Jesus want the disciples to do? To learn of him. Verse 21 says, Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? There is no God else beside me. God said, let them take counsel together in verse 21. Counsel is advice. Who's giving the advice? It's not Oprah or Martha Stewart or Paula Dean. Now, I've got strong opinions on one of those. The other two I'm just kind of okay with, you know. It's, you know, I don't have anything against Martha Stewart and Paula Dean. I'm thinking about trying some of those recipes. I'm just trying to figure out if I can afford bigger pants before I can delve into that. But the advice that's being given here in Isaiah chapter 45 is advice from the Lord. He said, who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. God is giving the advice. He wants us to learn from his advice. And his advice is in his word. He wants us to learn from his word. And in order to do that, you know what? We need to gather together. We need to assemble and have church and have worship services and have Bible studies and have Sunday schools and have Bible schools and revival meetings. We need to assemble. Now, what does God want us to learn? Verse 21, there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. God is the only God. He is the true God, and there are no other gods besides God. He's the only God, only on, omnipotent being, only deity. The rest are just spirits. God is the only deity. Satan is a spirit, not a deity. God is the only deity. He wants us to learn that. He wants us to learn that he is a just, that means a lawful or a righteous God. He is a lawful and righteous, holy God and a Savior. He's perfect, innocent, and holy. And he used that holiness, as we discussed this morning, he used that holiness to save us from our sins. He wants us to learn that. And in verse 22, he wants us to learn to look to him. Verse 22 says, look unto me. And be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Now, it might not seem like a whole lot, but people spend their entire lives learning to look to God, and people spend their entire lives failing to look to God. You say, well, I thought looking wasn't that hard of a thing to do. People have a hard time looking to God because human nature says, i got to fix it myself. i got to take matters into my own hands. And you know, it's tragic when people think that they've got to save themselves because they can't save themselves. Only God can save you through your repentance and your faith. Look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto God and be ye saved. He wants us to learn to have faith, to hang our hat on the fact that he paid for our sins on the cross through Jesus Christ that gets us into heaven, not that we've done all these great things to get us into heaven. Not only salvation of the soul, he wants us to look to him for salvation for our bodies, physical salvation. You may be in a tight spot right now. You may be having an illness going on. You may be having a financial distress going on, and, and you, want to, you, you want God to step in there. You need salvation from that illness, salvation from that financial situation, salvation from that conflict. Look to the Lord. He'll save you from it. The assembling of ourselves is of utmost importance. If we aren't willing to assemble, to come together, to worship, to come together, to pray, to come together, to study, to come together, to fellowship, might I say to come together, to fellowship, love second Sundays, to come together, to fellowship, if we're not willing to come together, we're not willing to be a church. And if we're not willing to be a church and come together, then let's just go home. I'll get my power screwdriver out. We'll take the sign down. We'll donate the money in the treasury to, the, to a missionary somewhere. And we'll just quit wasting each other's time if we're not willing to be a church. If we're not willing to get together, 
we're not willing to be a church. Assembling of ourselves is of utmost importance. That's what a church is. The word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which was a called out assembly. A called out assembly, and that assembly had a purpose. That assembly was called out to do business. We are a called out assembly has been called out to do the business of the Lord. Jesus said, Know ye not that I must be about my Father's business. God wants us to assemble. Secondly, God wants us to bring others into the assembly. Verse 21 says, Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who's them? Them is the people of the nations who were, who were making false gods. God said, you tell them, tell ye, you tell them. Tell them what? Tell them that their gods cannot save them. Tell them that God can save them. Tell them that salvation is freely given if you repent and believe. Tell them how to be saved. Tell them. And bring them near in verse 21. Verse 20 says to draw near together. And when we draw near together and we assemble, we draw near to each other, but we also draw near to God. Those that we are trying to rescue from the world, well, we need to tell them how to be saved, but we need to draw them near to us. We need to draw them near to God. We need to draw them near. We need to bring them into the assembly, which means that we need to be bringing people to church. John chapter 1, verse 40. John the Baptist was baptizing and preaching and he saw Jesus and he said behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world him you must follow and you had two men there one of them's name was Andrew Andrew had a brother named Simon Peter what did Andrew do Andrew first went and found his brother Simon Peter the apostle go on to be the apostle Peter and he brought him to Jesus we need to go out and find our brothers. We need to bring them like, like Andrew brought Simon Peter to the assembly where Jesus was. We need to go out and find our brothers and our sisters and our cousins and our neighbors and our friends and our acquaintances and strangers. And we need to bring them to the assembly so that they can meet Jesus. You don't have to come to church to be saved. But if you bring them to this church, no matter what the topic of the sermon is, they're going to hear the gospel. Do you know anyone that you could bring or invite to church? God wants us to bring others into the assembly. There's a doctrine going around now that says worship service is for the church. Outside evangelism is for lost people. But you know what? First of all, God is saying, tell ye and bring them near. He's telling the, these people who he's addressed, his people, he's telling them that escaped the nations. He's telling them to bring those who have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image. He's telling them to bring those idolaters into the assembly so that they can learn from the Lord, so that they can get straightened out, so that they can repent and believe. Not only that, but when you look at those early churches, they had visitors in those early churches who were not Christians. The Apostle James wrote in the book of James, he called them out for, you know, you, you, you give a good place to the one that wears the, the, uh, the expensive clothing and you tell the poor person to sit under your footstool. He said, you're missing something here. Well, James wouldn't have been addressing a situation had that church not been having visitors. Who do you know that you could bring or invite to church? Third thing, God wants us to look to him for salvation. Verse 45, uh, chapter 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Look unto God for salvation. Look unto me. Who's speaking? God. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. Just look to God for salvation. Don't look to yourself. Don't look to you've led a good life or you've done good things or you were baptized or you went to church or you sang in the choir. You didn't sing in the choir here because we don't have one. One day we will. 
but but we don't have one yet. But 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 when we do get a choir, don't think that singing in that choir is going to get you into heaven. You look to the Lord. You look to the cross. Jesus Christ paying for your sins as He died on that cross. That is your salvation. That's what you look for. That's what you look to. When God says, "Why should I let you into heaven?" Because Jesus paid the penalty for my sins. That's what you're hanging your hat on. Look unto God and be saved. Isaiah 118, God says that he wants to reason with us. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. What do you want to reason about, God? Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God reasoning in Isaiah was that he was going to purify the people from their sins. In Isaiah 53, we see that happening. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. God wants you to trust that for salvation. Nothing else. Because there is nothing else for salvation. Hebrews 2.3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great, a ne so great salvation? which was at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? If you neglect the, the fact that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, if you neglect that for salvation, what else can you look to? There is nothing else to look to. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For it is by grace through faith that you're saved, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of good works, lest any man should boast. What does God want? He wants us to assemble. He wants us to learn. He wants us to bring others into the assembly and to teach others and to lead others to salvation. And he wants us to keep our eyes on him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the blessings that you've given us. Father, we pray that you would take this word and that you'd bless it to your honor and your glory, Father. And if there's a decision that needs to be made tonight, Father, we pray that you would lead the person to, uh, to uh, commit and make that decision, Father. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you to help us to stay committed to assembling with each other, to, to learning of you, Father, to sharing the gospel with others. And, Father, we pray that you would keep our faith strong in you and nothing else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand for a hymn of invitation.